Um, another couple I wanted to highlight because that it, it brought it to my mind um, mm -hmm. when you had said this, but um, Chrissy and Jim Jones. Now, one thing I admire about Chrissy, because at first everybody looked at her when she proposed to him on national television on Love and Hip Hop. You know, everybody was like, girl, are you crazy? Y'all done been together, you know, 20 years or whatever it's been. I'm, I'm possibly exaggerating, but I mean, I'm pretty sure it's 20 years now or something like that, but they done been together for a minute. And we all... Also seen her whip down on Kim Bella for telling um, uh, Emily during a meeting that she had been with Fab. But we gonna rewind. We'll talk. I'll, I'll reference that again later. But um, Chrissy proposed on national television. The first time I had ever seen that on national television myself. Not that I'm for or against. You know that. Hey, to each his all. But she proposed to him on national television. Then they proceeded to not get married. So she did that. Oh, that's what I proceeded to not get married. Then he gave her a ring or whatever, because she basically, you know, he, I think he gave her a ring to have to keep her or something. They were going through, you know how they do. They go through, they get her the ring. Fast forward, what has it been like six years? And they're still not married. But at this time, it's Chrissy saying she realized shortly after that that her worth was in, in more than just being attached to Jim Jones. What it was is she got her own. You see what I'm saying? She got her own. She, um, she, now she's doing real estate and some other stuff in Miami. She moved to Miami. He had financial problems. He was losing a house. He had a whole lot of stuff going on. She got drama with the mama. He, I'm pretty sure she doesn't experience him stepping out. I mean, you know, sure. I don't know if I've ever seen that in the blogs or anything. But I'm pretty sure she's experienced that. And now she's like, he wants to get married now. And she's like, mm, nah, I'm good. I'm good how we are. I'm okay. And so I don't know if women, we get it late or we, once we fed up, we realize, you know, I've been there when you swear I've seen myself married for somebody and sitting in a rest of my life and the relationship is a mess but I'm working hard to make it work and do all these things. And then finally you come into a uh, realization, like, what are you doing? It's almost like your, your soul steps out and looks at you and say, girl, get it together. And I'm wondering if Erica, and I'm not necessarily saying Safari is the volatile one in the relationship. I, I don't really believe that. For some reason, I believe she's passionate or crazy with an accent over the wire because you know she's Hispanic. Shout out to our Hispanic viewers. Mm -hmm. She crazy, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, and the same thing for uh, Cardi B. And what we know uh, Offset is acting the fool. So we, mm -hmm. she don't fall in that. But for Safari, I don't know. You know, it, I don't know. He seemed like a pretty cool dude, pretty, you know, goofy. But then for um, Chrissy and Jim Jones, she finally got her, you know, I don't know if it was her self-confidence. I don't want to say that's what made her propose to him. I don't want to say that. But whatever it is, obviously he wasn't ready because he had, you know. And so she decided to do that. And then he proposed to her later. And now he wants to get married. She's like, nah, I'm good. Um, do you think women grow out of their – I don't know the word I want to use because I don't want to offend anybody, but their – desire for a toxic situation do you think that's something you just naturally grow out of are you are you done when you done like it takes a certain amount of being fed up to finally let go um or you know because it's different for her she gets viewed differently because she is um by heritage and what we would call a black woman versus latin you know what i'm cool. saying so well, Chrissy? Uh, Chrissy. Chrissy oh no but Chrissy, is, woman, Chrissy is cubana know? but she's also latina She's a black and Cuban. All of those women, as far as I consider, are Afro-Latina. But, you know, some, some claim it more, more than others. But she leans more on her black side, you know, as a black Cuban than other. But no, yeah, but I... I well, isn't that, the, isn't that, like, just the same throughout history? I'm not even going to say uh, throughout history, but that is it. Like, you, 
nobody can tell you when you fed up, but you know when a woman is fed up and she's not taking it no more. And it's a, it's very shocking and surprising to the the male in a relationship because they like, what's that, what's that damn Jay Z line? Like you ain't have to give me back like that. Yeah, like, yeah, I, yeah. Like damn, like mm-hmm. I've been doing this shit for years to your ass, mm-hmm. and you ain't never do this. Now, you hold up, you for real this time? This time you for real? Yeah, yeah nigga, I'm for real. For real, I've had enough. And it's hey guys, it's your girl Shayla here. Go to Facebook and Instagram and like Salon Talk DMV. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, go to our YouTube channel at Salon Talk DMV and hit that notification button so that you guys can get all of our new uh, content and see what we got going on. See all the opinions of the ladies at Salon Talk DMV at S A L O N T A L K DMV. Salon Talk DMV. Uh, it takes some people way longer than others because at the end of the day people are human and if you're in love or you think you're in love or i'm not even gonna say you think you're in love you are in love with your person uh, and you're you're committed to them and you're also i feel like it's, it's, sometimes women are committed to the idea of being with somebody if that makes any Don't sense give up. You don't want to give up on that person. Yeah, you don't no want to give And you also, when you think about how much time and energy that you have invested into this person, and like, oh my God, I got to start all the fuck all the way over again. At least with this nigga, I know what the fuck I'm dealing with. I'm not trying to get out this relationship, and now I have to come deal with a new nigga shit, and it's, it's just too much to even think about and handle. However, when it's enough, it's enough. And only the person that is inside that relationship, the woman in that relationship, or the man, honestly, can say, I, I, I've had enough. But it's very shocking to the person on the other end that is the source of all of the trauma. Because they looking like, well, wait a minute. What was the tipping point this time? Right. <laughs> I don't mm-hmm. understand. I feel like I've done things worse than you, you came yeah. back. Yeah. And I feel yeah. like, even when they are on the brink of thinking, oh, you're serious this time, they're like, it, it got to be something. In I just got to figure mind. out what I got to all- do to get you. Yeah. Because I have taught you how to treat me. I've taught you how to love me. I've taught mm-hmm. you that there is a place in this heart for you. I'm going to get you back. It's just like, like we talking about songs like Future said in his song. I'm gonna get my bitch back. Yep. <laughs> and, and, you know, know, like he, he, just, and he did, <laughs> but but not this time. Yeah, not this time. I think I go ahead. Go ahead. No, I'm just saying it's hardwired into women, though. We have to think about this. It's hardwired uh, again, and I've said this a number of times when we're on here. A hundred years ago, a woman did not have a choice to marry you might have just been handed off um and you didn't get and certainly marrying for Mm -hmm. love wasn't always what was going to happen for Mm -hmm. you so within a hundred plus years time we now have agency we can work outside of the home we can make our own money we can do certain things so we can survive in both men and women is still implanted the idea that for millennia men have been our sole support they have been our protectors and our providers without us hitching our wagon to some man you're gonna perish either you're gonna be with your parents or you're gonna be with a nigga and so i think as it relates to that you know both for you know support and sustenance and or if you end up getting pregnant so once you move beyond that piece and can begin to recognize your own power. I do and think that goes to what you're saying. It takes a minute to, because we're biologically programmed to want to make it work, like you said, for the investment, for all those things that we put into it. But when you recognize your own power, then you get to move to this space mm-hmm. where you're like, you know what? I don't, this is a choice. I don't necessarily have yeah. to do this. So I'm not going to anymore. That dawning happens for, I think, us in this age at different points. But it wasn't a dawning that happened for a 1950s housewife, maybe. 
So, you know, just wake up. Hopefully, whenever you wake yeah. up, it's good. Or a dawning that happened for Erica. I mean, Emily. Emily yeah. is fabulous. Or a dawning that happened. I just don't understand them. it. Because, I mean, yes, in the era of the 1950s, 60s, I can't even say necessarily the 70s. Mm -hmm. I just, you know, I guess part of it is, you know, some people being bred to feel like they have to attach their se themselves to a man or whatever the case is. But there's also, I've never been green in my life. Mm -hmm. I'm just not, I'm very aware. But one of the things that I feel like I'm very self-aware, almost to a fault where it's also true that when you are paying enough attention to what you have going on and building something for yourself and focusing on your own on what you're doing there is there are things that go by you that you don't necessarily see because you're not completely focused like i feel like for instance for my own situation you know the situation that i was in before i wasn't in a situation where I feel like I taught somebody how to treat me and I kept taking them back or whatever the case is. I was so focused on building for, because I wasn't taught to attach yourself to anybody. I was always taught from a child growing up to be super, super independent. So I was so focused on building on my own that stuff that was happening was flying right by me and I wasn't seeing it. And the person who I was dealing with was so manipulative that it all, it always added up. It always added up until it didn't. Right. And when it didn't, I didn't play any games with whether or not there was going to be an option of teaching you how to treat me. Right. I already told you what it was going to be. And that's going to be that. Um, I just don't under, I, I don't know. I just don't know the difference in where you get the, if somebody else doesn't do it for me, I'm not going to have it versus I'm working so hard to do it myself and you end up in the same position. Like, I don't know where the two cross or connect. You understand what I'm saying? Because I look at people, I look at certain people and I go, like, a Mary J. Blash mm -hmm. versus uh, a Emily B. Mm -hmm. or, you know, uh, a Chrissy Jones. Mm -hmm. You know? We all ended up in the same place. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Either way. So it's just like, I don't know. I don't know. That's that's what I want to talk about. Like, what, what are the differences there and how do they intersect? And at the end of the day, we all still end up in the same, you know, predicament. It is, but it's about self worth. It, like you said, you were raised to be independent. There, are, um, you two with two young girls could be raised in the same way to think about being independent. One of them could love the idea of growing up, making it on their own, building their own things, and being powerful. One, the other one could be doing that too and have a deep longing the entire time for the love, protection, and support of a man so that they don't have to do this because they've been trained to do it their whole life, but it just doesn't feel natural. Yeah. And I think for that ends up being the difference. Like, we could both get the same programming, but it's about, you know, and maybe it's the difference between a boss bitch and not, not in the whole negative way, but just like, there are some of us who really are like, you know, I know I'm going to come in alone and I'm going out alone. I got a purpose. I'm here. I'm trying to get this. I'm trying to get this in. I'm trying to make these things happen. I'm happy to have you come along with me on this ride. But if you don't, niggas is like buses. You leave another one finna to come. So, you know, we're going to keep it moving versus this man is my everything. And when I get with him, like I will do everything for him. And I was on this amazing trajectory and then he showed up and then I just stopped doing all of that because 
he volunteered. He didn't got me a Bentley truck and he got me a house and he said he will take care of me. So I don't got to do that no more. So I'm finna chill. You know, I think for most of us here, there's an inner drive within us. Like, would I take the nice, the bobbles and bangles and nice things and a little bit of a rest? Yeah, but you never gonna knock the hustle out of me. I am a hustler through and through to my core. I'm never gonna be hungry. I'm never not gonna eat. And it is unsettling to me to think that my providence or sustenance would ever come from anybody other than me. I would like a man. I would like to have a man who can provide that for me without question, but I will never fix it in my head that my source is either going to come from anybody other than God and myself. So I can't, certain kinds of bait I can't take. So I'm more on your end too. Like my last situation was, I was so busy on trying to build things and trying to fix things and apply the things that I know in a couple's faith situation that I just wasn't allowing myself to drop down into the space of discomfort and see the things that were happening. No, they weren't trying to put them directly in front of my face, but in reality, they weren't trying to necessarily conceal them well enough. And when it finally, when the rubber met the road, like, oh, hell, no. Oh, I'm seeing this right in my face, like, okay, I've kind of been looking over here. Oh, now you put it directly in my view? No, nope, I cannot see it, and we're done. Another woman would have been like, oh, wow, maybe we can, right. When it, I gave, I saw it once, I was like, okay, here's an issue, let's work on it. After you say, yes, I agree, this is a problem, I'm going to address it, and we agree for that, if I see it again, come on now, bruh. I'm not going to keep repeating myself. I'm not. You are not my student. This is not my classroom. So, I don't know. It's interesting. Conclusion. All them people crazy. I wish the best for them, and Mm -hmm. there you have it. But it does make for good TV. It certainly does make for... Hi, this is Alicia from Salon Talk DMV. Make sure you follow us on Facebook and IG at Salon Talk DMV. And while you're at it, go ahead over to the YouTube where you can see our full episodes. Like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget to hit that notification bell. You do want to be the first one to know when we drop new content, right? Right. Hit it, like it, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you soon. Bye.